Hello, this is Brother Kramer from the Math Department. This is a continuation of lesson dealing with inference for several means in NOVA. Where we last left off is I went through the problem here dealing with a study done by Emmons and Nicola comparing three different groups. The gratitude group, the hassles group, and the events group. Where we left off is that stated the null and alternative hypothesis. All the means are equal to null. The alternative is one or more of the means different than the others. So how we state the null and alternative is, is different than what we used to seeing before, where we write it out in symbols, whether primarily we use mu uh, in our stated the null and alternative hypothesis, mu representing the population mean. Now steps two, three, and four is our test statistic degrees of freedom and our p-value. Here are the results here, but where I got those, I got those from SPSS output. We find this similar, similarly in Excel output. This is my test statistic, it's under the F, which is 4.075. My degrees of freedom, there's two different types of degrees of freedom. This is the between group or numerator degrees of freedom, and the within group or the denominator degrees of freedom, which is 189. Both of them need to be listed. And then my p-value is this number right here, 0 0.019, okay? In some sense, our p-value is this, and our p-value is less than our level of significance. We would reject the null hypothesis. And so, so therefore, we have sufficient evidence to say that at least one of the main happiness scores is different across the groups. Okay. So now here's the next example uh, that's also found in the, in the textbook. Um, the Nike shoe company that makes sporting goods, include, including shoes, funds, funded the study to compare five different or five soccer shoe designs. The objective of the research was to determine if there is a difference in the main accuracy soccer players achieve using different Nike shoe designs. As part of the research, they asked training soccer players to kick the ball at a target. The target was placed 115 centimeters above the ground and at a distance of 10 meters from the players. Using electronic equipment, the researcher recorded the distance from the center of the target to the point where the ball hit. The objective of the research was to assess if footwear could affect the accuracy of a soccer player. The subjects wore five different soccer shoes, and for one treatment, they kicked the ball in stocking feet, and they used a level of significance of alpha equal to 0 0.10. So what I'd like for you to do is to stop the video and go through this problem. The data, the link to the data is on the online textbook, and go through this, the six steps, the same six steps that we did here in this previous problem, do the same thing with this problem up here. Okay, so here are the six steps. First is to state the null and alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis is that all the means are equal, and the alternative is one or more of the means differ than the others. Steps two, three, and four we get from our output from either Excel or SPSS. Step two is our test statistic, the degrees of freedom is step three, and step four is our p-value. Where I get those results, I get I got it from my from SPSS, you'll find similar output in, in Excel. And my test statistic is 2.020. My degrees of freedom, there's two, there's the between group or the numerator degrees of freedom, which is five, and the within group with the denominator degrees of freedom, which is 114. My p-value is 0 0.081, and since 0 0.081 is less than our level of significance, which is 0 0.10, we reject the null hypothesis, and so we have sufficient evidence to say that at least one mean distance from center of target is different across the five different types of footwear. Okay? So now, the last thing I want to cover is checking requirements and descriptive statistics. So there's four different requirements that we need to have, and the last two we can check. The first one is that all the samples are from a simple random sampling. So if you're to do a study like this, you have to assume simple random sampling. Samples are independent. Now these last two, we have to check. Okay? Actually, before I say this, the samples are independent. I'll go back to this one. The samples are, there. It's, this is, ANOVA in a way is an extension of what we did in the previous lesson, which is independent samples. The independent samples in the previous lesson, we had two groups. But here we have, we can have more than two groups with ANOVA. So, you, so this is, so this requirement is similar to the requirement of independent samples. Now going back to the last two, the, that we can check, first of all, the populations have the same variance. And how we check that, we check that the largest standard deviation is no more than two times the smallest standard deviation. And then finally, the other requirement is that the data are normally distributed for each group in these QQ plots. Okay, so here I have some output here that shows us, let's first of all, let me go to this here, where I have some standard deviations for each of the three different groups with the, the grateful study, the events group, the grateful group, and the Hassel's group. And here are my standard deviations. 
my larger standard deviation is this one, and my smallest is this one, okay? And so what we can do is, is so long as this standard deviation is no more than two times this, and you can eyeball and it looks like it is the case, we can assume equal variances. Or another way you can look at it is, is the ratio, is this divided by this, is this less than two? And it is, and so we can assume we have equal variances. But the second requirement to check, which is uh, looking for the data are normally distributed, I have this, the data with the three different groups, the events group, the grateful group, as well as the hassles group. And it looks like, for the most part, with all of these, see, these look approximately normal, especially with the last one here. It's not perfect, but they do look pretty good. So we can assume that the requirement is met that the data is normally distributed. Okay? Now, lastly, what I want to mention here is the descriptive statistics used with the data. Typically, we mention the sample sizes, the sam sample means, and the standard deviations for all the samples. And then for the graphs, you can either do a histogram or box plot from all the groups. So with the numericals, here is going back to what I, what I had showed you earlier. Here's the, for the three different groups, the sample sizes, the means, and the standard deviations. So having this summary and looking at the means and the standard deviations gives us a pretty good idea and summarizes the data pretty well. We can also look at box plots and, and or histograms. And here's an example of box plots. We can visualize to see which which has a higher mean, even though we don't, even though with the five number summary you don't look at, we don't see the mean, we have medians. But we can at least see the center, the centers are higher uh, between grateful group, the events group, and the hassles group. We can also compare the spreads of the data as well too using histograms or using using box plots. These are box plots. And then the last one here is we can do something similarly with histograms where we can look at where approximately the center is for each of these groups. And then we can look at to see the spread as well as the shape of all these different distributions. So we can get a pretty good idea looking at either histograms or box plots in terms of the shape, center, and the spread of all these three different distributions. And that concludes the video dealing with ANOVA. And if you have any questions, please speak to your teacher or to one of your TAs.